Greetings, and welcome to the Gold Solo Challenge Series. The challenge rules are in the description below. Today we're going to have a duel with two solo challenges between Scyther and Scizor. You might be thinking, there's no contest here. Indeed, Scizor is an evolved form of Scyther, but let's take a closer look. These two were introduced in Generation 1 and Generation 2 respectively. Scyther evolves into Scizor after a trade holding the metal coat. Both share the bug type with the other type being Flying and Steel, respectively. Each has the same base stat total focusing on speed and balance respectively, and that one's important. Let's dive into some history. First is Scyther. On paper, it's a good Pokemon, but in Generation 1, Scyther found itself in PU. It is outclassed by Pokemon like Persian due to its best moves being normal type. In Generation 2, Scyther moved up to underused, since Wing Attack went from 35 base power to 60 base power. But that didn't last long, ending up back where it began in PU after Generation 5. Scizor ended up on the UU ban list for Gold and Silver. It swaps out Wing Attack for Agility, otherwise keeping the same move list as Scyther. Since Generation 4, Scizor has the ability Technician, which increases the power of weaker moves by 50%. Combining that with Bullet Punch, a still type priority move, and you're wreaking havoc quickly. Believe it or not, Scizor even found significant usage in Ubers, and the story doesn't end there. Scizor gets a Mega Evolution in Generation 6 and 7, so it's a top tier Pokemon. In Generation 8, Scizor is technically UU again, but that generation is a mess. Overall, the Scyther line has gotten a lot of attention from beginning to end. With the lack of a Mega Evolution and Cleave War being a thing now, all attention is drawn away from poor old Scyther. As always, this is a Generation 2 solo challenge run. We're done with history. Let's talk type, stats, and moose. For Scyther, we have the Bug and Flying type. It's not a good type combination since it's quad weak to rock and has 5 weaknesses overall. However, Scyther is immune to ground type and quad resists grass and fighting. For stats, Scyther is well rounded. Highlights include an excellent 110 base attack and an excellent 105 base speed with a base stat total of 500. Scyther has a good move pool. It learns Sword Stance. Fury Cutter being the only bug move Scyther can learn is disappointing, but overall, Scyther will slice through the competition today. Looking at Scizor, it has a bug and steel type. It's a better defensive combination than Scyther, but Scizor cannot handle fire moves at all. Moving to stats, Scizor has an excellent 130 base attack and excellent 100 base defense, but a slower 65 base speed with the same base stat total of 500. I have a feeling that lower base speed is going to be troublesome. For moves, Scizor mirrors Scyther. It would be nice if there were some more differences to make Scizor more distinct from Scyther. I will concede that Scizor can learn Sandstorm, but that's not going to make the difference today. It's hard to say who has the overall advantage. While Scizor brings a better type and attack stat than Scyther, Scizor is weak to fire and slow to start. Nevertheless, Scyther is quad weak to rock, and bug flying means a lot more attacks will hit for regular damage, and Scyther is not especially bulky. It's going to be surprisingly close. I think the margins will be razor thin. But with that, let the challenge begin. We'll start our competition with Scyther. I want the move return, so I set the day for Sunday. There's a lady at the Goldenrod City department store who will give you the move if it's Sunday in game once your friendship is high enough. We head to Elm's lab to pick up our Scyther, and we name him Speedy. He's going to need to rely on his speed or he's going to get rocked. We set our rival starter to Cyndaquil, since Bug is weak to fire. For Scyther, it's going to be less of a liability since Speedy will outspeed everything today, especially with our first moves, Leer and Quick Attack. After talking to Mr. Pokemon, we head back to Elm's lab, but first, we need to take on Batty and his Cyndaquil. We're going to take him on at level 5 to make things fair. We'll have quite the challenge today. We'll use Quick Attack for our first move of the run. It does decent damage taking Cyndaquil down a third. Leer from Cyndaquil fails. Another Quick Attack hits Cyndaquil, taking it to orange health. A tackle from Cyndaquil does only 3 damage. We use Quick Attack and it's not quite enough, but we take another tackle from Cyndaquil no problem. We finish off our first Batty battle. So that battle wasn't too bad. Let's head to Violet City. On the way, we pick up our HM artist, Hoot Hoot. Scyther isn't going to have too many issues at the start, so we'll skip most of the trainers. We will go to Sprout Tower first, since Speedy is weak to flying type, but Quad resists grass type. By the time we get to Faulkner's Gym, we're at level 11. We've picked up the move Focus Energy, which could be interesting. It raises your critical hit chance by one stage. With Slash later, it could mean a lot more criticals could come our way. We'll see. Let's take on this first Spiro trainer, probably the most dangerous trainer for Scyther today. Quick Attack does half, and Peck does somewhat significant damage. However, it goes down next turn to Quick Attack. We'll heal up and take on the trainer before Faulkner. Birdkeeper Rob has two level 7 Pidgeys. Unfortunately for Rob, his Pidgeys can only use Tackle, which does 3 damage. Two Quick Attacks are enough to take down the first Pidgey. Critical didn't matter. We level up and learn Pursuit. Not useful for this gem, but it will be quite useful for us in a few minutes. The next Pidgey is the same story, going down in two turns. We'll heal up one more time and make Speedy hold a berry. Faulkner shouldn't be too challenging. His Pidgeotto knows Gus, but thankfully, Gus is only a 40 base power attack. 
so we should be able to sustain a few hits. What is good, however, is the first Pidgey. We use Focus Energy, and it uses Tackle. Faulkner is unable to use his signature move, Mud Slap, on Scyther. That means we should coast and hopefully score a few critical hits on his ace. I use Leer a few times, and then we knock Pidgey out with a single quick attack. We have a little over 3 quarters of our health left, plus that berry for Pidgeotto. We use a quick attack and no critical, with about a third taken off Pidgeotto. Gust actually does a bit of damage. We quick attack again, no crit, and Gust takes us down to orange health. But our berry kicks in, and we... wait, we don't knock it out. Gust does 11 damage this time, so that berry did matter. Okay, we knock out the Pidgeotto next turn, but I need to give credit to Faulkner. He challenged Scyther a bit today, but we're moving on to Azalea Town. We pick up our HM Extra Wooper on the way to Azalea Town. You know, like in a movie. Unfortunately, I didn't get the memo and I misspelled the name, but you get the point. We take down everyone in Slowpoke well, so Speedy is ready for Bugsy's gem. We still have the same moves as before, and we're level 16 when we arrive. Quick Attack is not quite enough to take out the Spinarak, and we get poisoned. But poison doesn't take effect if you knock out the Pokemon. Unfortunately, Quick Attack doesn't knock out the Lata by next turn either, so we do take some damage. But one more turn takes care of this trainer. We'll cure our poison and move on to the next trainer. Against Bugcatcher Al, he sends out Caterpie. We still don't knock it out in one hit, but String Shot shouldn't completely alter the balance of this battle. Next turn, we knock it out and we face Weedle. This time, we do a little more damage, but it's not enough. Poison Sting hits, doesn't poison, so we knock it out next turn. We finish this battle, and I'd like to skip this last trainer here and get Bugsy over with. We do manage to sneak by and heal Speedy up before the battle. Bugsy shouldn't be too difficult. We are Bug and Flying type, so we'll resist any damage from Fury Cutter. Poison will be our worst enemy here in this battle. First up is Metapod. It's quite defensive, and Quick Attack does less than half. String Shot fails however, so we hit back with a Quick Attack, and Metapod goes for Tackle. One more Quick Attack takes it out, and we're on to Kakuna next. Poison Sting could threaten us, if we're not quick to knock out the Kakuna. But, on the first move, Kakuna goes for a Philadelphia 76er. I think now is a good time for focus energy, and we do get hit with Poison Sting, but no poison. Quick Attack next turn gets Kakuna down to its last legs, and Poison Sting hits with no poison again. Now we have Scyther vs Scyther. It has Quick Attack, Fury Cutter, and Leer. We use Leer first, so it didn't use Quick Attack. Instead, it uses Fury Cutter, which did one damage. We're going to keep using Leer to whittle down Scyther's defenses. After three Leers, we use Quick Attack doing massive damage because of a critical hit. Focus Energy really isn't the worst move, but Bugsy Scyther hangs on. Fury Cutter hasn't missed, taking us down to orange health, but one more quick attack from us squashes Scyther and Bugsy. That was an easy battle with Bugsy, but now we need to get ready to take on the rival. We're level 18, but by no means will this battle be easy. We can get paralyzed or put to sleep by Ghastly, and Quilava can hurt Scyther with Ember. First up is Ghastly. We can only use two moves here, Focus Energy and Pursuit. I offer Focus Energy first turn, and we are licked by Ghastly, and we're paralyzed. We were holding a Paralysis Cure Berry, but it's not a good start. If we can knock out Ghastly with Pursuit, we should be okay. Well, we don't unfortunately, and we're put to sleep. What are the odds? While we sleep, you can see that Lick isn't doing very much to us, and by the time we wake up, we've only lost 10 HP. We knock out Ghastly and move on to Quilava. Unfortunately, Quick Attack only does about a quarter, and Ember does much more than a quarter. So we're not going to have a good chance here. Yeah, one more Quick Attack takes Quilava right under half, but one more Ember from Quilava means we're toast. We use Quick Attack, but no critical, meaning Scyther picks up its first reset. Okay, but we're close. I think leveling up to 19 will get us over the edge. I did skip Hiker Anthony earlier right on the outside of Union Cave. He's got a Geodude and a Machop, which will provide us some good experience. Unfortunately, as we enter battle with a Hiker, I forgot to heal, so I'm pretty sure this Geodude has Rock Throw. We go for Pursuit, and Geodude does indeed have Rock Throw, <laughs> taking us to 3 HP. We take it out next turn with a Pursuit, but there's still one Pokemon left, Machop. If Quick Attack can knock it out, we'll be okay, but it doesn't knock it out. We brace ourselves for a low kick, and hey, Scyther Quad resists fighting type moves, so we'll hang on ever so slightly. I'll heal up and finish leveling up to 19 after this scary battle. So time again to fight Batty. First up for him is Ghastly, and we'll use the same strategy of starting with Focus Energy. It uses Lick, but we aren't paralyzed this time. We use Pursuit, and it doesn't knock out the Ghastly. That's unexpected, but Lick doesn't paralyze this time either. Next turn, we knock it out and move on to Quilava. It's a bit more health. This time, instead, I go for Leer. 
This is a big risk, but I think it'll be more consistent. I get greedy and go for Lear again, and Ember takes us to 20, so we need a knockout here. Unfortunately, we're not even close, so I guess we're gonna... Hold on. Oh my goodness. We hang on, but just barely. Quava goes down, but the battle is not over. We do in fact have Zubat next. We use Quick Attack doing devastating damage, but it was a critical. I think that mattered. I'm not sure, but hey, Scyther hangs on. Scyther took about 22 minutes to get through the first two badges and defeating Batty. Let's see how Scizor fares in the early part of the game. We head to Elms to pick up our Scizor Rusty. Like Scyther, we are going to set Cyndaquil as a Batty starter. Unlike Scyther, Cyndaquil is much more of a threat with Scizor's quad weakness to fire. Luckily, in the first Batty battle, Cyndaquil does not have a fire move, but the second and third Batty battles will be scorching. Scizor will also go into battle at level 5 and starts with the same moves as Scyther, so let's see how that goes. Right off the bat, Quick Attack is a critical, taking Cyndaquil below half health. It goes for Leer, and the next Quick Attack takes it to red. Even with Leer, Tackle does 1 damage, and Quick Attack finishes Cyndaquil. Having Steel and higher defense is going to be useful for many battles throughout the game. I'd say about 75% more of the battles are going to go our way with these differences for Scizor. However, as we head to Faulkner, you're going to see what happens when we don't have that in our favor. Following the same path as Scyther, we finish Sprout Tower before the gym, arriving at level 10. Against the first Spiro Trainer, Scizor uses Focus Energy, and Peck does 5 damage. Not bad. Next, we use 1 Leer, and Peck doesn't critical, doing only 5 again. Now we use Quick Attack, taking out the Spiro with a critical hit. All is well, so let's skip to Faulkner. Against Faulkner, I decide to set up on his Pidgey. We use Focus Energy, and it blasts us with Mud Slap, neutral due to our typing. Then I use Leer, but miss. Pidgey hits us again with Mud Slap. The next time, Leer hits, but again, we're hit with Mud Slap. Leer misses Pidgey again, and once again, we're hit with Mud Slap. Next turn, Leer hits, and Mud Slap hits again. We're blind, and Quick Attack misses. We're hit with Mud Slap, miss again, and hit with a critical mud slap. We miss one more time with quick attack, and again, but finally take down Pidgey in one hit. Okay, we've lost 10 HP, but Scizor is in a blind spot right now. Against Pidgeotto, quick attack misses, and Gus is neutral doing five damage. Quick attack misses yet again, but the berry gives us two more chances. We miss a few more times, but finally quick attack hits, doing about a third. We hit again, and need only one more turn to hit. However, we miss twice in a row, and Scizor gets a reset. It's obvious to me now that I should spend less time on Pidgey and more time setting up on Pidgeotto. Immediately in our rematch against Faulkner, I use Quick Attack two turns in a row. Only taking one Mud Slap is going to make things a bit easier. Against Pidgeotto, we go for Focus Energy and then Leer, but Leer misses. By this point, Scizor has taken good damage from Gus, so it's time to attack. I think it's enough because the first quick attack takes Pidgeotto to half. Unfortunately, we miss next turn, but we don't miss after that, taking down Faulkner. Whew, let's head to Azalea. On the way, there's an interesting battle I want to discuss against Fire Breather Ray in Union Cave. As the name might suggest, he has a fire Pokemon in Vulpix. Quick attack isn't enough to take it out, and Ember hits, doing 15 damage to Scizor, and we get burned. We do finish the battle, but after this, I try to heal the burn, because there's still one trainer left before Azalea Town. As you can tell by my panic scrolling, we have no way to take care of this burn. I can heal Scissor's hit points, but not status. I end up checking this tree for a berry, but it's not what I need. Alright, here goes nothing. Okay, we made it by. But the trainer is the one that has the Geodude and Machop, so who knows what could have happened. Anyways, let's skip ahead to Bugsy. Scizor is going to have the same moves as Scyther did against Bugsy, and as always, Metapod is first. Quick attack is not enough to take it down to half. It goes for string shot and then tackles us, and then we take it out. Against Kakuna, I could set up here, but I go for a quick attack. It goes for a former Houston Rockets player, and after two turns, we knock it out. I decide to use Focus Energy on Scyther, but we're outsped by Scyther's Fury Cutter. We're also quad resistant to bug, so I'm not too worried. It goes for quick attack as we do, but with its higher speed, it hits first. Our quick attack is a critical, but it's not enough to do half. Scyther goes for another quick attack, and ours takes Scyther to about a third left. It must have switched back to Fury Cutter as we move first, 
and one more quick attack takes Bugsy out. Not all is well for Scizor though. Before we can head to Ilex Forest, we need to take on the baddie. Scizor is not going to outspeed Quilava, and Ember is going to cause massive damage if it hits. I level Scizor up to 19 just to be safe. Let's see how the baddie battle goes before Ilex Forest. First up is Ghastly, and Pursuit is almost enough to take it out. It tries Hypnosis and misses. This time I set up Focus Energy, but then we're put to sleep. Since Steel resists Ghost and Ghastly isn't a good physical attacker, Lick is only going to do 1 damage to us. After about 4 turns of sleep, we wake up and take out Ghastly. Time for Cool Lava. Quick Attack doesn't even do half. Ember hits, doing well over half. We use Quick Attack one more time, and we don't get a critical, meaning Scissor goes down for its second reset of the run. I think for the next battle, we ought to try a different approach. An approach different than the one we used for Scyther. We're going to teach Fury Cutter to Scizor. It's not a particularly good move, but since Ghastly is our first opponent and Ghastly resists bug moves, we should have enough power built up to take out the Quilava. In case you're unaware, Fury Cutter doubles in attack each turn it hits. It has 95 base accuracy, the same as Tackle, so it normally hits. I think the power does go up to 180, but we won't need that much today. With Scissor's same type attack bonus, I think we can make it work. Let's see. Against Ghastly, I use Focus Energy. I'll take what I can get. We're going to need to do as much damage as possible. It goes for Spite, which is pretty good. We're done with Focus Energy. We start cutting with Fury Cutter and miss. <laughs> Lick hits and paralyzes, but with the berry, life goes on. This time, Fury Cutter hits, doing minor damage, which is good, since we want power to build up for Quilava. Next turn doesn't miss. Hypnosis misses, however, and Fury Cutter takes Ghastly to red. That's good, we'll get one more hit in. Lick hits, no paralysis, and Fury Cutter finishes Ghastly. If we don't miss next turn, I think we can knock out Quilava. Fury Cutter doesn't miss, and whoa, we did massive damage, even though it's not very effective. Zubat, which quadras as Fury Cutter, is also no match and Batty is down. We're moving on to Ilex Forest. Scizor finishes this part at 21 minutes, just a minute faster than Scyther. Scizor's stronger attack means battles are ending faster than Scyther can end them. Let's see how Scyther fares against Whitney and Morty. As we head to Whitney's gem, we pick up our HM Inspector Oddish. I'm a little worried heading into her gem. Miltank has rollout, which is a rock type move and Scyther has a quad weakness to rock moves. We should be able to survive one, but being able to survive two is doubtful. We do have a few tricks up our sleeve. First, Scyther is fast. We can outspeed Miltank. In Ilex Forest, we can also get the move Headbutt. It hits a bit harder than Quick Attack, but more importantly, it has a 30% chance to cause a flinch. We'll go ahead and skip ahead to Whitney. Scyther is at level 20. Time to see how that battle goes. First up for her is Clefairy. We use Focus Energy so that we can hopefully score some critical hits. It metronomes the Slash, which does about 11 damage. Next turn, we Headbutt, no critical or flinch, but a metronome Whirlpool is about all I can ask for. We knock out Clefairy with two thirds health remaining. Against Miltank, we move first and Headbutt gets a critical. We don't get a flinch, but Rollout misses. Next turn, Headbutt hits with no critical or flinch. As I suspected, Two rollouts would end Scyther. We need something here, and we knock out Miltank, thanks to a critical. It definitely mattered. We get the plane badge from Whitney. We need to head to Ecritique City now, but for one of the rare times in these runs, we still have a major obstacle in our path. And I mean that literally and figuratively. Pseudo Wudo. Has to move Rock Throw, which is even more dangerous than Rollout. Let's see how that battle goes. We take on Pseudo Wudo at level 24, and we picked up Agility, but that won't help here. First turn, I go for a Focus Energy, and I brace myself. Pseudo Wudo uses Low Kick? I'm pretty sure we doubled resist that, but whatever. Next turn, we use Headbutt, and it was a critical, but it did less than I'd like. Pseudo Wudo then uses Flail. Next turn, we barely do any damage, but we get a Lucky Flinch. Then, we get a critical, and Pseudo Wudo is now in the red. It uses Flail, which at least is stronger now, but why isn't Pseudo Wudo using Rock Throw? We knock out the Pokemon that I thought might be more of a challenge, but I guess not. Well, that was really weird. Before we skip ahead though, and what actually ends up being quite a challenge, is this trainer up here. We'll skip the twins, but there's no avoiding this battle against Psychic Greg. 
Man, I never prepare accordingly for his battle. He's got a drowsy, and I woefully go for pursuit even though headbutt would do way more damage. And of course, we're put to sleep. We have decent HP right now, thankfully, but it's about to change quickly. One turn passes with a disable fail and then Dream Meter hits doing good damage. While I'm asleep, I'm still trying to use Pursuit and it's still trying to disable but failing. Finally, I switch to Headbutt, coming to my senses, and one more turn of Dream Meter hits. And oh, I guess I wouldn't have had a choice anyways, since disable finally lands. It's getting ridiculous at this point, since we're still asleep and we're hit with a critical Dream Meter. There's only one chance left. Thankfully, we wake up and we hit with Headbutt, doing incredible damage because we got a critical. That mattered. That was really lucky, especially since we didn't use focus energy, but we're moving on. After we take down the kimono ladies, we take on the baddie and burn tower. We're at level 26 now, still the same moves, let's go. First up is Haunter. We're gonna use the age old strategy of pursuit. We do a little less than half, but luckily, Haunter does not go for curse. Maybe the last turn was a range and we'll knock out Haunter this next turn, but we don't. Stupefyingly, it goes for Lick again instead of Curse, but we do get paralyzed and healed since we've held on to that berry since the last battle. Great, we knock it out next turn and it's time for Cool Lava. No wait, Hagnemite? Headbutt does decent damage, but it can paralyze us. Instead, we get boomed and Headbutt takes it down. This time we do face Cool Lava and we use Headbutt, getting a flinch and it's more than half, so Cool Lava goes down next turn. Zubat is last, and it goes down to a single headbutt, meaning we've defeated Batty. We're about ready to face Morty now. After collecting the Mint Berry, which will wake us up if we fall asleep, we've made it to level 30 and learned Wing Attack. Scyther and Scizor have higher special attack than Miltank and Tauros did, so using special attacks was a viable strategy for a little bit. But Wing Attack is going to be much more useful overall. Scyther is so fast, I don't see any issues taking down Mortimer. Let's take him on. First up is Ghastly. We use Wing Attack, and one is enough. I think it will be enough for Haunter, and it is. But we got a critical, so who knows? Gengar might not be. It's not, but Hypnosis misses, meaning we get to keep it buried for now. And Gengar is down. We level up, and now it's time for Haunter. Wing Attack is enough with no critical, but we leveled up. So who truly knows? What I do know is that Scyther has defeated Morty, and we're going to Olivine. Scyther has defeated Morty in about 38 minutes. That's pretty good time. Let's see how snippy Scizor can be in the same section. While Scizor had a bit of trouble in the first part of the game, it matches up better for the next few badges. Things could get interesting at Morty since Gengar will outspeed, but we shall see how that turns out. We'll face Whitney at level 21 with Headbutt. First for Whitney is Clefairy. Scizor outspeeds and hits hard with Headbutt and knocks it out with a critical. Moving on to Miltank, we don't outspeed and roll out hits for 5 damage. We use focus energy to help score some crits. Next turn, roll out misses and headbutt does a third with no critical. Miltank switches to stomp, but it doesn't cause a flinch and headbutt hits, taking Miltank just below half. Next turn, Whitney switches back to roll out and headbutt from Scizor does not knock out Miltank, but one more headbutt takes care of Miltank. Whitney is zapped. Moving on to Ecruteek, I'm a bit shy to take on the rival until we do everything up until Morty. By the time we arrive at level 29, we have picked up agility. I think we can hang on, let's see. First is Haunter, and Pursuit does about half. It goes for Lick with no paralysis. Pursuit hits, taking it out. We level up to 30 and Scizor learns Metal Claw. This will be useful for most battles, except this one. Kulava resists steel. We do outspeed thankfully, and Headbutt takes Kulava to critical health. We don't get a flinch, and Ember hits doing pretty good damage, but not as much as last time. One more headbutt finishes Kulava. Against Magnemite, a headbutt takes it below half, and Sonic Boom does 20 to us. So one more headbutt takes it out. Against Zubat, one headbutt is enough to take it out. So we defeat Batty with less problems than last time, and we're ready to take on Morty. With our Mint Berry equipped, we shouldn't face too many issues with Hypnosis. First Gas League comes out, and then goes down to a single Metal Claw. Haunter goes down to a Metal Claw. Gengar is next and it does outspeed, but Hypnosis misses. Metal Claw also isn't enough to take it out. On the next turn, Hypnosis misses again, so Gengar is gone. We level up to 31, and Haunter goes down to a single Metal Claw. Morty is defeated. 
Sizzler has beaten Morty around the 38 minute mark. That is also pretty good. In fact, both of our competitors are tied. The next part of the game presents different challenges to our counterparts. Scyther could have a difficult time at Jasmine and Price of all people. We'll continue following Scizor through the seventh badge, however. So after getting the quest in the Olivine Lighthouse to get the medicine, we face Chuck's gem. Scizor is neutral to fighting types, since Bug resists fighting, while Steel is defensively weak to fighting. We arrive at level 34, and Scizor should cruise through Chuck's trainers. First up is Hitmonlee. We outspeed, and one Mortal Claw is enough. Now, we face its counterpart, Hitmonchan. We also outspeed and knock it out surprisingly, but we did get a critical. We move on to the Machop and Machoke trainer. First is Machop, and one headbutt is not enough to take it out. It goes for Seismic Toss, about the most damage you can do to Scizor in this gem, and one more headbutt takes down Machop. Against Machoke, headbutt hits and causes a flinch, therefore sealing its fate. We move on to the next trainer, who has two man keys and a primate. Metal Claw is enough for both the first and the second man keys. We level up to 35 and take on the Primate. Metal Claw is not quite enough to knock out Primate and low kick hits for neutral damage. One more Metal Claw finishes the trainer off and we're on the Chuck. I heal up and save before, but we ought to be okay. Chuck sends out his first Pokemon Primate. First turn, we go for Focus Energy and outspeed Primate. It goes for Leer. Next turn, Headbutt almost takes care of the Primate, but Primate has a sliver left. It goes for Fury Swipes, doing a nice 2 damage each swipe to Scizor. So we move on to Polyrath, the scarier of the two. Let's see what happens. We do outspeed with Headbutt and cause a flinch. It's not quite half, but we hit again with Headbutt. This time there's no flinch, and Polyrath hits with Dynamic Punch. Confusion is going to be annoying to deal with. Next turn we're confused, but we avoid hitting ourselves and Scizor has cut up Chuck. If we had to hit ourselves in Confusion and Polyrath hit us again, it could have been over. We'll skip Jasmine and head to Price. By the time we arrive, we've hit level 40 and picked up Slash. Poor Price. Maybe he'll get his redemption one day, but I don't think he will today. This battle should be straightforward. First up is Seal. I go for Metal Claw since Seal is Ice type. Except apparently it's not. It's only Water type. Come on, man. Next turn, it goes down to Slash. We get a critical hit, but you know, whatever. Dugong should actually be part Ice type this time, but Metal Claw doesn't knock it out. We switch to Slash and knock it out. Against Piloswine, Price's Ace mind you, we go for Metal Claw and knock it out in a single turn. It was a critical, but that tells you all you need to know for Price. It's almost time to battle Jasmine. We do some errands in the meantime to help bolster Scizor's chances. We give it some protein and HP ups, as well as teach it return. Focus energy has served us well, but it's time to say goodbye. Let's try Jasmine and see what happens. I'm expecting a tough first go around. First up is Magnemite, and we will use return. It doesn't do enough damage to knock it out, and we get confused. We hurt ourselves next turn, and then we get hit with a Thunderbolt. We hit ourselves again, and get hit with a Thunderbolt again. We do manage to knock out Magnemite next turn, but it's a fool's errand at this point. Instead of sending out Magnemite and delaying the inevitable, Jasmine moves to take us out of our misery with Steelix. We at least outspeed and snap out of confusion, but Return does nothing, like 1 8th. Fortunately, Iron Tail doesn't knock us out, which bodes well for a future attempt, but at this point, I'm looking ahead. I go for Slash, and we do get a critical hit, but Steelix has at least two thirds left. Iron Tail hits, and Scizor picks up its third reset. That was tough, and instead of battling Jasmine again, I decide to level up. At level 42, we learn Scizor's ultimate move, Sword Stance. Oh yeah. This move raises your attack by two stages. That roughly means each time you use it, you raise your attack by 100%. It will be easy to set up and take down Jasmine. Let's try that battle again now. First up is Magnemite. I want to knock out the Magnemite as soon as possible, but it's going to take two turns anyway, so I go for Sword Stance. Thunder Wave hits though. Next turn, Magnemite hits us with Supersonic. We are holding Bitterberry, but I would have preferred a Paralysis Cure Berry in this scenario, but they've all been spent. We are able to hit the Magnemite and knock it out. Jasmine sends out Steelix, so it's time to set up. First we get hit with Iron Tail, but it doesn't do too much damage. We go for Agility, and then we outspeed. But I keep going for agility unfortunately, 
I need to be more careful. Iron Tail can lower our defenses. We unfortunately max out our speed and then start using Sword Stance, but we're paralyzed. Then Iron Tail hits and lowers our defense. We use one more Sword Stance and Iron Tail hits and lowers our defense again. Welp, here goes nothing. We use Return and whoa. We knock out the Steelix in one hit. We also get a critical, who knows if it mattered. Well, next up is Magnemite, and even though we have Paralysis, we have those agilities built up. We use Return, and we're not paralyzed, so we knock out Magnemite. We defeat Jasmine, even with our mistakes, collecting the seventh badge. It took Scizor about one hour and four minutes. That's about a 26 minute split for the three badges and the rocket hideout. Not too bad. How's that gonna look against Scyther? Well, Scyther has a wing attack and outspeeds Scizor. Not to mention, bug and flying results in a quad resistance to fighting type moves. I think we ought to go ahead and see how that battle with Chuck goes. First up is Primate. We outspeed, wing attack hits, and Primate is knocked out. Next up is Polyrath. Wing attack hits and knocks out the Polyrath. It's actually just a one hit. We level up and Chuck is defeated. On to Price. Price could be tricky. We don't have Metal Claw like Scizor did, and Scyther's attack is slightly less, meaning Piloswine could survive. We are also weak to ice moves, so that's something to consider as well. We are at level 39 though, price time. First is Seal. We use Focus Energy to pair up nicely with Slash. Super effective Icy Wind hits for 13 damage. Speed drop shouldn't matter here, and then Slash is enough to one hit the Seal. And next up is Dugong. We go for Slash, and it only does about half. We just figured out that Dugong is part ice, and Aurora Beam does decent damage. We knock out the Dugong next turn though, so now we get to face Price's Pile of Swine. Slash also does about half the Pile of Swine, and it uses Blizzard. Uh oh, that was a lot of damage. And to make matters worse, we're frozen. Well then, Price has done it. Hats off to you, sir. Only my sixth Pokemon solo challenge run, and Price has knocked me out. Let's try that again. We will use the same strategy as last time. So first is Focus Energy, and I forgot to heal this time. So Icy Wind takes us down to 74. We knock out Seal and move on to Dugong. Slash hits, and we don't crit, meaning Aurora Beam is going to take us into dangerous territory. We do knock it out, but things aren't looking so hot. Against Pile of Swine, Slash crits, but it doesn't knock it out. But Blizzard misses. Okay, he gave it his all today. Oh, he healed. Well, it shouldn't matter. We get to move twice in a row. Oh, that first slash does not look like it did enough. But hey, the second one is enough. That was weird. Okay, it was a surprisingly tough price battle. But now we get to take on Jasmine. We'll just go ahead and level up to 42 and take on Jasmine. We'll have Sword Stance and Return as well. First is Magnemite. I go for Return instead of Sword Stance for some reason, and Thunder Wave misses. We knock out Magnemite and Jasmine sends her second Magnemite out. We go for return again and Thunder Wave misses again. We knock out the second Magnemite and make it to Steelix at full health. Well, time to dance, but our full health is going to be depleted quickly since Steelix knows Rock Throw. Oh man, this isn't good. It does about a third, which means we don't have much time. I dance again and Steelix goes for Rock Throw, but misses. Okay, our luck has about run out this battle. Let's try return. It does half, but we can't celebrate for long as Rock Throw hits. We really need some good range or a crit here. We go for a return and we get the crit. Wow, that was lucky. Or maybe Scyther is just good like that. Scyther gets its seventh badge, so let's compare our combatants. Scyther got seven badges in one hour and two minutes. Okay, so now we have two minutes of separation between the two. This is obviously not scientific at all, but hey, the consistency is nice to see. We'll stick with Scyther through the last badge in the Elite Four. How quickly can Scyther slash his way through this major part of the end game? After taking out the radio tower, we arrived to Blackthorn City in good time. Yeah, only about 13 minutes. I know everyone loves to hate on the Pokemon Gold and Silver Rocket stretches, but it's literally only about 20 minutes total between Mahogany and the Radio Town sections. It is slightly tedious, but I like to use that time to think about where our Pokemon will face challenges and where they're going. And for Scyther, I've come up with some ideas. But first, let's take on Claire. She has three Dragonair and a Kingdra. We're level 49, and Return knocks out the first Dragonair. 
Well, now we're level 50. That means Dragonair 2 and Dragonair 3 are probably going to go down hard and fast. Well, King Joe's level 40, but there's not much to hype it up with. We don't knock it out in one hit at least, and Surf does decent damage. But oh, Claire uses a Hyper Potion, so we'll use two returns in a row and take out Kintra, meaning Scyther is moving on to Kanto to take on the League. What challenges are ahead for Speedy? Well, Rock-type moves are the biggest threat. That means Aerodactyl could be troublesome, but with Swords Dance set up and Scyther's natural speed, I think Speedy should be just fine, at least through the champion. Of course I remember Karen and her troublesome Umbreon, but if we get past that, I think we're good. Oh, and let's not forget our friend Batty. So yeah, first up is Sneasel. Let's set up. Sneasel is ice type, but I think it has like 35 base special attack. After we set up, wing attack takes out Sneasel, then Golbat comes out, and it goes down to a single wing attack. We switch to return, and Magneton goes down instantly. If it gets taken out in one move, you know not much else has a chance. Nevertheless, Typhlosion comes out and we use Return. Bye bye Typhlosion. And then there's Haunter. Wing Attack takes it out. Finally, we've got Kadabra. Wing Attack hits and crits, but that's it. Batty has been destroyed. There's really not much left to say or do. We're gonna heal and head on to Will. As always, if there's a Will, there's a way. Don't let the ice fool you. He only has Jinx and it's not gonna be able to touch us. First is that too, and we won't bother setting up. Return takes it out in one hit, next is Jinx, and it goes down to a single hit. Then there's the next Zatu, and it goes down in one hit. For Executor, it could survive a return, but it's not going to survive a wing attack. We level up to 55, and Slowbro is definitely not a one hit knockout, but it goes for Curse, so we knock it out the next turn. And that's it for Will. He's bugged out. Okay, time for Koga. I'm not going to heal, seeing that we didn't take any damage that time. We also didn't set up sword stance, but we will now. First is Ariados. We use a single sword stance and it goes for double team. To prevent anything from getting away from us, we use wing attack and knock it out. Next, Koga sends out Crobat. Well, we outspeed and wing attack knocks it out in one go. Venomoth comes out and no chance, it's knocked out. Okay, Fortress, I'm not expecting to be a one hit, but hey, wing attack is neutral and what do you know? Fortress is breached. Next is Muck, and Wing Attack is going to take it out. Scyther has SWAT Koga down. Against Bruno, we could get knocked out by Rock Slide from a champ, so we will need to set up. First is Hitmontop, and we're going to fully set up Sword Stance. While we're setting up, Hitmontop only uses Quick Attack. So by the time we're ready, we're down 30 hit points. We use Wing Attack, and Hitmontop gets one more Quick Attack off before we take it down. Next for Bruno is Onyx, and it goes down to a single Wing Attack. Hitmonchan is also going down. Machamp is going down, and Hitmonlee goes down, and Scyther buzzes Bruno. But now, we need to face Karen. We won't be able to set up right away, so we better hope we don't get hit with too many sand attacks. And I do go for sword stance first, since we won't knock it out. Sand attack does hit. So now, we need to see how this turns out. We use wing attack, and it doesn't miss. We knock out Umbreon in one hit, so if we can hit Karen's other Pokemon, and that's kind of a big if, we should knock them all out in one hit. Next is Houndoom. We use Wing Attack, and thankfully, we don't miss. I don't want to imagine the carnage a flamethrower would cause. We level up, and now we face Gengar. Again, we don't miss with Wing Attack, and another Karen Pokemon goes down. Against Murkrow, we also don't miss, and it goes down. Will we finally miss against Vileplume? Apparently not. We hit, and Vileplume is blown away. In fact, I'm blown away. That sand attack should have been a lot more annoying, but now we're facing the champion at full health. There is no need for additional prep. Lance time. We're going to set up against this first Pokemon, Gyarados. It could cause some damage with Outrage or Surf. On our first Swords Dance, it goes for Rain Dance, so we're both dancing. We use another Swords Dance and it goes for Hyper Beam, but it misses. We use the last Swords Dance and Gyarados uses Surf. It hits, doing about 40 damage, not too shabby. But it's all but over now. We use Return and Gyarados is a one hit. Lance sends out one of his first three Dragonite. We use Return and knock it out. Another Dragonite comes out and another Dragonite goes down in one hit. We level up to 58 and out comes Aerodactyl. It's fast, but we're faster. And Return sends it back in time. 
Charizard isn't going to outspeed and we knock it out, leaving one final Dragonite. And Return knocks it out. And Scyther has defeated the League. It took about an hour and 30 minutes. That is very fast. Speedy, even. But, as we all know, the real challenge lies ahead. And although Scyther has only two resets at this point, we do have Brock and Blue and Red. But before we get to that, we'll cut over to Scizor and see how it finishes up in Pokemon Gold. Claire is not going to be much of a challenge for Scizor either. We're at level 50. I think we'll outspeed everything. I'm not even going to set up. Let's take on our Dragonair and Kingdra. Her first Dragonair will use Return. We outspeed and knock it out. It's the same result for the next two Dragonair. Against Kingdra, we don't have enough to knock it out. It goes for Smokescreen, which is quite annoying. Then Claire heals up and we try to finish her off for the next two turns. We luckily don't miss on either, and Claire is down. It's time for Scizor to move on to the Elite Four. With Swords Dance and Agility, Scizor won't have too many issues at the Elite Four. Karen is always a threat with her Umbreon, but we should have ample opportunity to set up against all of our challenges at the Elite Four. The rest of the game for Scizor should actually be pretty easy up until Red. I think it's possible to avoid any more resets the entire game, but we'll see. Against the final rival, I like to challenge myself. We won't set up. Against Sneasel, we go for Metal Claw since it's super effective. It goes down and Batty sends out Typhlosion. Since we're over leveled, we'll outspeed and a single return is enough to take down Batty's ace. Magneton will be annoying if we can't knock it out in one hit and we don't knock it out. It uses Thunder Wave and then uses Sonic Boom as it outspeeds us after Paralysis. We are able to attack and take out the Magneton. Next is Haunter, and we might be in the Nightmare scenario as we get confused by Confuse Ray and then hit ourselves in Confusion. Then Haunter goes for Curse. Luckily we aren't paralyzed next turn and knock out Haunter with a single Metal Claw. Against Kadabra, it goes for Future Sight and we're still confused. Scizor hits itself in Confusion and Curse Damage takes hold. We're down to Orange Health now. Kadabra doesn't attack us and Metal Claw hits, knocking out the Kadabra. We have defeated Batty and he didn't make it easy for us, but the Elite Four will probably be a little easier, at least the first three battles. Let's will our way to victory against Will. First is Zatu, and we won't waste our time setting up. We knock out the Zatu, we level up to 54, and take on Will's next Pokemon, Zatu, again. Return also takes care of business, and we face off against Executor. Return is not a one-hit knockout, but it uses Leech Seed. So as long as we don't waste too much time on Will's other Pokemon, we won't be in much danger. Next up is Jinx, and Metal Claw takes out Jinx. Against Slowbro, we surprisingly outspeed. And seriously, what is surprising is that we knock out Slowbro in one hit. With a critical, but I'll take it. Will is squashed. Against Koga, I don't bother healing. And first up for Koga is Ariados. We're going to set up a little bit here. We use two Swords Dance for Fortress and one Agility for Crobat. Ariados' Endeavor with the double team lets it down. And we're moving on to Venomoth. It goes down in a single turn. We level up to 55 and take on Fortress. We use Return and surprisingly, it's not a one hit. But as always, Fortress uses Spikes, so we knock it out next turn. Mutt comes out and it's a one hit. Crobat is next and we outspeed, knocking it out in one hit. Another battle with no damage taken, Scizor has swarmed Koga, and it's Bruno time. First for Bruno is hit him on top. We use Sword Stance and it digs, so we get another turn to set up a Sword Stance. We do take damage, albeit insignificant damage. Our turn knocks out the hit him on top. We outspeed and hit him on Chan next, taking it down. Hit him on Lee is next, and just as quickly we move on to the next Pokemon. Bruno sends out Machamp, but one turn of damage is too much for it to handle. A single Metal Claw is more than enough, and Bruno is stung. But now, we need to battle Karen. We heal up, and we need to face her Umbreon first. I go for Sword Stance, since I don't think we can one-hit the Pokemon. Very luckily though, she uses Fan Attack, so we are able to knock it out next turn. Houndoom could have ended us if we got a Sand Attack from Umbreon, but not today. It goes down in one hit. Bob Plume doesn't stand much of a chance. Return takes it out. Neither does Gengar. Metal Claw takes it out. Finally, there's McCrow. And yeah, we level up and Karen has been defeated. We'll replenish our power points and health and take on Lance. This battle will be straightforward. First is Gyarados and we set up against it. 
We use the first sword stance, and it hits with Surf, doing decent damage. Next turn we use another sword stance, and we get hit with another Surf. We switch to agility for the last turn of our setup, and Gyarados uses Rain Dance. We use Return, and Gyarados goes down. Next up is Charizard. We are quad weak to fire moves, but this battle we won't have to worry, especially with Rain Dance. And we'll outspeed, and Return takes out Charizard. Lance sends out his level 50 Dragonite, and it goes down quickly. Another Dragonite comes and goes, and the final Dragonite is dismantled. We level up to 58, and there's one Pokemon left, Aerodactyl. It comes out, and a single Metal Claw takes that out because we outspeed. Scizor has defeated Lance and is ready to head to Kanto to take on the Kanto Gem Leaders and finally face off against Red. Scizor defeated the champion in about 1 hour and 32 minutes. Scizor is still behind by 2 minutes. Can Scizor shave a few minutes off by the end of the game? Well, I haven't showed much Kano footage up to this point in my challenges, but we're going to today. We're at level 66 and there are two badges left for Scizor, Blaine and Blue. You might notice the reset counter has increased by 1, and that's because we took a critical hit flamethrower. I wasn't filming at the time unfortunately, but yeah, that's what happened. The next battle against Blaine could be a challenge, since we're not fully able to set up against Macargo. It's also part rock type. Well, one sword stance goes down, and it goes for Curse, so a Metal Claw will be enough to take it out this time. Then Magmar is next, and a single return is enough to take it out. Rapidash comes out, and it is unable to withstand Scizor's high attack stat. Blaine in the end was not too much to handle. What might be too much to handle is Blue. His Pokemon are decently leveled, and some of his Pokemon will natively outspeed Scizor. We definitely won't one-shot everything. What's especially troublesome is that his Pidgeot has Whirlwind, which could stop our setup capability. And after Pidgeot, he will likely send his RK9 out next. So let's battle Blue. First for Blue is Pidgeot. And as we go for Swords Dance, Pidgeot uses Whirlwind. I could deposit all my Pokemon, but that would only benefit me, so why would I? As I send Scizor back out, we get hit with Wing Attack, which is neutral, and I go for Swords Dance again. Pidgeot again uses Whirlwind. So at this point when I send Scizor back out, I go for a return, but of course the AI stops using Whirlwind. Coincidence? I think not. We go ahead and knock out Pidgeot, but this isn't good. Of course, Engineer levels up, but now on to the bad. We have to face our canine. I don't think we'll outspeed, let alone knock it out in one hit, but we actually do outspeed, doing about a third. But that won't be enough. Flamethrower does massive damage to us, and Scizor picks up reset number 5. And to make matters worse, we didn't save. Since I thought we were safe, and we get to face Blaine for a third time. Well, this time, instead of setting up, I decide to skip that, and that's a mistake. Metal Claw doesn't knock out the Macargo. Luckily, again, Macargo goes for Curse. Well, I have to set up now. Magmar could knock us out, but instead it opts for Sunny Day. With one Swords Dance set up, we use Return and knock out Magmar, and move on to Rapid Ash. It goes down to a single return, and we've made our way back to blue. Well, this time, I don't forget to save but hopefully the AI is a bit more compliant this time around. First out for Blue is Pidgeot. We use Swords Dance, and now Pidgeot sticks with Wing Attack. We go for Return so we don't risk our Swords Dance attack boost. Next is our Canine. Since we did a little over third last time, I don't know why or how, but a single return is enough to take it down. Well, with our Canine out of the way, I think we're all but set. Gyarados is next, and Return is enough to finish it. Executor is a bit more defensive, but it goes down as well in one turn. For Rhydon, we have a Metal Claw, which is enough to take it out. And then finally for Alakazam, we're going to do a Magic Trick here and make it disappear. The last Kanto Gym Leader is down, and we're moving on to Red at Mount Silver. Now, in terms of preparation, I do think that Scizor has more than enough to take down Red. We have Swords Dance and Agility. Setting up on Pikachu can be tricky if we take one too many Thunders, and it has Charm. But even if we're paralyzed, I think agility can get us to the finish line. Just to showcase that, we're not going to be using our rare candies today. First up for red, as always, is Pikachu. It outspeeds us handily and uses charm. We hit with return and it doesn't go down. Then red uses a full restore on Pikachu. And in return from us, it takes it back to orange health. This time, Pikachu goes for thunder and misses, thankfully, and we use sword stance. We get lucky again next turn as thunder misses, and return knocks out Pikachu. Now, you might be worried Charizard is next, but I don't think it's possible for Red to go in that order. So far, the only two orders I've seen after Pikachu is either Espeon or Venusaur. Well, Venusaur is who comes out. It is, unfortunately for Red, the perfect Pokemon for us to set up on. 
It does outspeed us and goes for Sunny Day. So that's about all we can ask for since we quad resist Solar Beam. We use Swords Dance and Solar Beam hits, doing almost 30 damage. Keep in mind, Venusaur is 10 levels higher than we are. With Leftovers, we have plenty of opportunity to set up. We take another Solar Beam as we continue with Swords Dance. This time I switch to Agility to boost our speed up. The next turn we outspeed, but one more Agility can't hurt. I think we've set up enough and we take out the Venusaur. With a critical hip, but hopefully that didn't matter. Next up, Red does send out Charizard. If we outspeed, we should win, but a flamethrower would be very, very bad. Return hits, and as Charizard's health slowly depletes, it looks like we do in fact have enough. Next is Snorlax, and we surprisingly outspeed. Its health bar depletes very slowly too, but one return was enough to take out the Snorlax. Next is Blastoise, and it goes down in one hit. And finally, for Scizor, is Espeon. We outspeed, return hits, and Espeon is done. We level up to level 69, and Red is finished. Scizor finishes right around the 2 hour mark. That's our best time so far in these challenges. Just to highlight how important agility is, I redid the battle with rare candies and no agility boost. At level 74 and against Venusaur, we're leveled up and maxed out at Sword Stance. Once we knock out the Venusaur, Charizard is next. Even at a relatively close level of 74 and high health, when we go for a return, Flamethrower hits very hard. I don't see any scenario where Scizor can survive a quad weak Flamethrower for a near or higher level Charizard. Also, it's important to note we were outsped here. Well, in terms of final statistics, Scizor finishes the game at level 69 with a real time of 2 hours flat and an in-game time of 7 hours and 18 minutes. 5 resets is about what I expected, but I did not expect to run into issues so late in the game at Blaine or Blue, but this was my first try with Scizor. Very curious to see how Scyther does since Brock, Blaine, and Blue all have rock type moves. Let's take on Brock. His team is going to be rock hard for Scyther to get through. We're at level 64 and first for Brock is Graveler. Although we're quad weak to rock, I believe we can take a few rock throws from Graveler, but I'm not really sure what moves it has. We set up a Swords Dance and it goes for Rollout. Perfect. I go for Return and we've taken Graveler out. Next is Onyx, and I know for a fact we're not going to be taking very much from it. We use another Swords Dance and it goes for Sandstorm. I think with two Swords Dances we can begin our sweep. Return takes out the Onyx, and now we move on to Rhyhorn. I go for Return and it goes down. Two Pokemon left, out comes Omastar which goes down to a single return, and last but not least is Kabutops. It's less defensive than Omastar, so one hit is enough and Brock has been defeated. We hurry off to take on Blaine. I think Scyther could be threatened by Macargo, but we should be okay if we're able to set up a sword stance. It goes for Rock Slide, and it doesn't do nearly as much as it probably should. However, Macargo is not a very good physical attacker. With that in mind, we go ahead and take out the Macargo and we face off against Magmar. Magmar goes down in one turn, and so we have Rapidash left. It can't survive Scyther's return, so we're moving on to Blue. Blue could be tough. We don't have a good path to set up with Pidgeot's super effective flying type moves and Rhydon resisting all of our attacks. I would not be surprised if we have to reset a few times here. First up for Blue is Pidgeot. I go for return and it uses wing attack, taking us almost to half health. One more return finishes Pidgeot and Blue sends out Rhydon. I go for Sword Stance, and then Rhydon hits us with Rock Slide. Yeah, that's a reset. I need to prepare better for Rhydon, so let's try that again. When we take on Blue again, we will let Scyther set up a few Sword Stances on the Pidgeot. We use Sword Stance, and Wing Attack takes us down to almost half. We use Sword Stance again next turn, and Wing Attack hits, doing massive damage. We barely hang on, but we have no more opportunities to set up, so let's knock out the Pidgeot and try our bolstered attack stat on Rhydon. It should be enough. Oh. Quick attack knocked us out. Well, there's another reset. That critical hit was pretty unfortunate. I think third time's the charm. Let's take on Blue again and see if we fare any better. We face off against Blue and his Pidgeot. We go for Sword Stance first, and it uses a mirror move. I think if we don't take a crit, we should be okay for one more turn of Sword Stance. Wing Attack hits and takes us to Orange Health, but we survive, so we're able to finish Pidgeot next turn. With two Sword Stances, we should be okay to knock out the Rhydon. We go for Return and... Yeah, that's not nearly enough damage. Rock Slide hits and we reset yet again against Blue. So things are looking grim. I decide to use a few rare candies on Scyther. I hope that gets us the advantage we need. We level up to 68 and try again. If we're not successful this time, Scizor may be able to gain the timed advantage on Scyther. Okay, so here goes attempt number 4. 
We use Swords Dance on Pidgeot and it follows with Mirror Move. Next turn, we dance again and it mirrors us again. I've had enough and knock it out next turn with Return. Against Rhydon, we use Return and it barely does any more damage than last time. Well, luckily for us, it goes for Sandstorm. So we get the knockout next turn. Next up is our Canine and we switch to Wing Attack, knocking it out. Against Gyarados, we hit it and knock it out with Wing Attack. Following Gyarados is Executor and Wing Attack is enough for it to faint. And finally, Alakazam comes out and we take it down with a single return. Scyther has finally defeated Blue and we're moving on to face Red. Well that was a lot more challenging than I expected. But anyways, I think it's possible to beat Red without using all our rare candies. We do face a challenge with both Pikachu and Charizard being super effective against Scyther, but if we have the same order as last time with Scizor, we should face Pikachu, then Venusaur, followed up by Charizard, giving us ample opportunity to set up. First out for Red is Pikachu. We try setting up Swords Dance, but it uses Charm, and misses. I go for Return, since we can finish setting up on Venusaur. Wait, wait, hold on. Why is Charizard next? Why wouldn't Red use Charizard against Scizor like he is for Scyther? And we're oh so close, but not enough. Since we aren't quad weak to Flamethrower, maybe we'll survive. And we don't, and it wasn't even a critical. Let's try that again. On the next attempt, we use one rare candy since it was close to knocking out Charizard. We face off against Pikachu and go for Sword Stance. It hits us with Thunder doing massive damage, but we survive and get paralyzed. I deliberate for a second, deciding what my next move is, but what's the point? I reset and decide to change my strategy. This time, I'm going to take out the leftovers and replace it with a paralysis cure berry. Leftovers is one of the best items ever created, but it's not really going to help Scyther in this context. We're going to go big or go home. Let's try red again now and see how we fare. First up against Pikachu, we set up Swords Dance, and the first Thunder misses. We use Swords Dance again, and this time Thunder connects. Of course, we don't get paralyzed this time, but we knock out the Pikachu and move on to Charizard. I'm hoping that rare candy is what pushes us over the edge. We use Return and Charizard's health slowly dwindles. It is enough and that rare candy really helped us. We move on to Blastoise. Return is also enough to knock it out. Snorlax is next and it could perhaps survive, I'm not sure. We go for Return and apparently it was enough to take it down. We've got Venusaur next, and it goes down to a return, and finally is Espeon, and it's Red's fastest Pokemon. But we outspeed it today, and take down Espeon. Well, Scyther has done it. It took about an hour and 56 minutes. It had an in-game time of 7 hours and 8 minutes. It was a bit faster than Scizor, by 4 minutes in real time. It finished at a higher level of 70, with 7 resets, more than Scizor's 5. These two Pokemon have been our best yet. Having access to agility, and especially Swords Dance, is unmatched, as long as you can set up. Even without these two moves, these two are very good. In terms of this challenge, they are hardly distinguishable. I would give them both an A, since each has its own strengths and weaknesses. For Scyther, its speed is its greatest strength. I also really like Wing Attack, but being unable to hit rock types is a weakness unfortunately. For Scizor, Steel is always a strength. However, as a trade-off for that, and higher attack, Scizor is a bit slower and extremely susceptible to fire attacks. I like Metal Claw more than Wing Attack for coverage, since rock types are also defensive. If you're not facing fire, Scizor has the advantage, but if you are, good luck. I think I would still give the slight edge to Scizor. Scyther had some real luck to get through the game. I felt much safer using Scizor, and a few strategic errors on my end caused Scizor to finish a little behind. However, the results are the results, and Scyther even beating Scizor is a feat in and of itself. I think these two are extremely balanced in Pokemon Gold and Silver. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe and check out the other social media I'm on, or my other videos. See you next time.